Yo, yo. So in this simple tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this simple but super effective render I did of this uh, keyboard I did recently for Work Louder. Um, it's just a kind of fan project, really, really likes their keyboard, so I just decided to do a couple renders with them. <clears throat> so just to show you the basic lighting setup real quick, let me just pause this render. Um, we have one, two, three, four, four lights here. Um, we have one for the kind of backdrop to add that, I guess, gradient uh, back here. We have the light, um, which is emitting that nice orange kind of streak sunset look. And then we have a kind of fill light here to fill up this part of the keyboard. Uh, and then we have another kind of I guess rim light uh, just to give and pop some extra details in the keyboard uh, to really sell some of those key parts in the product which at the end of the day is the whole reason um, so yeah pretty much I have four small lights um, I guess three actually lighting up the actual product and then one main one here so let me just get straight into it by starting with pretty much a blank scene So let me just put these lights in a null and then hide them real quick. So, first of all, what I like to do is set a nice backdrop, um, I guess, lighting. Um, so for that, we're just going to use a basic uh, Octane Area Light. Uh, let me get that here and rotate it um, there and make it considerably smaller and move it down. So here, uh, and then we just want to go to uh, the light, details, rectangle, and change it to disk to get more of a nicer uh, offset. And we just compare the sizes here, uh, make it a bit bigger, and move it a bit further away. Cool. So that's our original light uh, sorted. Let me just see what power we had it on for that one. Looks like we had it on five, cool. Um, just to, I guess, speed this up so we're not doing a bunch of R&D. Um, so let's just see how that looks in the render view. Should be pretty much the same. If you saw my lighting breakdown, um, I did, uh, I guess, a uh, five-step process with how I lit the scene. Uh, as you can see, we go from a bit more of a exposed white to a nice gray, um, adding a bit more realism, making it a bit less flat. Um, next, what other light should we do? Um, I'll, I'll do this little fill light here. Um, so let's get another uh, light. Kind of just either search it up, or go to that bar there. Um, and let's bring the slides down. I'm actually just gonna turn the render view off real quick. Uh, let's just spin it around. And actually for a more, I guess, um, accurate positioning of this light, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna create a target object for that. I'm just gonna bring in a null uh, and face it to the corner I want, um, kind of like over here. And then I'm gonna go to uh, right click, animation tags, target, and just drag that null into it. And now we kind of have a basic, I guess you could say rig. Uh, let me just find where that light is. Match it to the per to the renders before, uh, and we had it on, I believe, uh, where's it gone? Three. So really low light. We don't want it too intense. We don't want to distract the viewer uh, from the actual, uh, I guess, main source of light, which is this orange streak. Uh, and then the next one I want to do is this one over here. Um, for that, we're just going to grab this. Uh, area light again uh, and we're just going to hold control and drag it over here pretty much and we just see where these this old one is um, to here and drag it over That's it. yeah and for this one I'm just gonna make it a bit taller to get some longer shadows 
Uh, so in the render, I had some pretty harsh, kind of long directional shadows, just in, yet again increasing that depth um, of the actual image. Let's just name this targets. Uh, and now time for the actual main streak of light. So for that, what you want to do is you want to get a, another aerial light uh, and just drag it. Now the key to getting those kind of strict and harsh uh, lights is having a really, really small light to get those harsh shadows. Now remember, that the smaller the light, uh, the uh, bigger or I guess more prominent the shadows are. Um, and as you can see, this one is way too big at the moment. So we just want to decrease the size of that considerably. Uh, let me just do that real quick. Cool. Let's turn that off. And now we're going to get into kind of the color and distribution of everything. So let me go to here, this light here. Let's go to the tag and let's add a uh, plugins. Cinema 4D Octane and an RGB Spectrum and we're going to add a nice uh, orange almost sunset look to this uh, just to offset it a bit cool uh, what power did we have that last time we had it on 25 cool um, just put that there and then to add that um, have nice gobo effect um, I guess to we use a texture in the distribution and go to plugins cinema 4d octane and then image texture and I've created a simple kind of rectangle with a blur just so it's not too harsh um, I've saved it as gobo here um, which I'll leave a link in the, um, the description or caption so let me just go to here in my downloads downloads gobo and open the image texture, grab the gobo, and put it in there. Um, so that's there um, with all the kind of correct parameters I found. And I found that uh, UV transform pretty much all the same. I believe that has copied over correctly. I hope it has. Yeah. Um, and in the projection, I've just found that. A, a different projection with some slight tweaks to the size. I'll leave this on screen for a sec that you can copy. I find that XYZ to UVW is just an easier way to control. Um, and pretty much with that lighting setup, you're pretty much good to go for that look. Um, just go onto here and you, you, know, you just wanna move the light around, I guess. And you can do that simply just by moving the target. And as you can see, it's pretty much all rigged to that. So then you can go ahead and art direct um, certain looks and things like that. Let me just pump this one up to say 30 um, to get some more harsh shadows and things like that. But yeah, that is how you create that basic directional look uh, and then add, I guess, your color correction and things like that. I'm just going to pump this up. And as you can see on this light, it's affecting this background. So a quick trick I use is, let me just delete this, on the plane, I go to um, right click and then go to, uh, should be in, I think it's in extensions, Cinema 4D Octane tag, and then object tag. And then I go, and then we're just gonna go to the light that we don't wanna affect this plane. See so if I just bump this up to like 2000 real quick. See how much it really affects that side of the plane? See if we like turned it off. See how much like darker that is now. Um, we don't want it to affect that plane. We want to keep this nice gradient. Um, all you're going to do is go to the Octane object tag, go to Light Pass ID, and just change that to two um, or whatever number, and then go back to the plane with the Octane object into the Object Layer tag, um, tag or section, and just click off two. And that will basically, it'll tell Octane that on this plane, ignore the light with the light ID of two, and it will just ignore it and not include it in the render. And now you can bump that up to actually move it lower and just turn off surface brightness. Yeah, see how we have these nice, that's a bit blown out, nice directional shadows, adding that good bit of depth. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, hope you enjoyed. And let me know if you learn anything.